So we're talking about membranes. Membranes are a really important part of any cell. When we start looking at the membrane, remember we said that it acts like the bouncer regulating the inflow and outflow of materials. And it does this, they think, because of a structure called the fluid mosaic model. Now what does that mean? So it means that because of the polar and nonpolar properties of the structure of the membrane, it wants to stick together as it is, but it's not solid. So we've got something like this when we go ahead and take a look at it. Okay? You can see that we've got two different types of beads here and that as I move it, the beads move with it. This is cool for a cell because this allows the cell to go ahead and be more flexible. It can squeeze through different capillaries. It can go ahead uh, through different areas of the body and still go back to its traditional shape. Now, when we start looking at this, this also means that it can go ahead and be damaged. But because of those polar and nonpolar properties, it can also be repaired as well. So if we were to go ahead and take this kind of fluid mosaic model structure, and then we go ahead and destroy it, say something attacks it, at first it looks like a mess. But what's going to happen over time is you're going to see that these molecules are going to go ahead and move back to a point where they rebuild that structural membrane in terms of you know, the bilayer, the lipid bilayer. Now, it doesn't work quite like this. This is actually a density demonstration. But when we start thinking about it, if I leave this over time, you'll see that this is going to end up settling right back into what it was before with those two layers right there separating the inside from the outside or vice versa of the actual cell. Now, if you do too much of this, obviously you're not going to be able to repair the entire cell. But in a small area, you could actually do some, some of this type of repair if there's small damage to the actual wall. You can see them starting to sink back now. Okay? And then in the actual fluid mosaic model, you actually have a whole bunch of proteins embedded into this. And there are two primary types of proteins. You have your integral or intrinsic and your extrinsic or surface proteins. So your extrinsic or surface proteins are going to be on one side of this membrane but doesn't go all the way through. Your integral proteins, or intrinsic, go all the way through the membrane and are typically channels that are going to be used for transport of materials across the membrane. Whether that's for facilitated diffusion or whether that's going to be for active transport depends on whether or not it uses energy. So again, the fluid mosaic model, all these tiny little pieces working together to build a structure that allows us to regulate the ingoing and outgoing traffic from the cell. Okay? Each one of these layers is made up, remember, of phospholipids. These are going to have a glycerol, hail, glycerol head and a phos uh, fatty acid tails, two fatty acid tails. Okay? All the fatty acid tails, whether it's on the bottom or on the top, are going to point inward, creating a little layer that's nonpolar. The glycerol heads are going to point outward since most of our body is water and water is a polar molecule. So polar polar in the middle here is going to be nonpolar. Okay? Polar, nonpolar, polar. That's what creates this boundary that separates what's inside the cell from what's outside the cell. All right, guys, I hope that gives you an idea in terms of a fluid mosaic model and the lipid bilayer. I hope you have any questions. Please feel free to reach out. I'll talk to you soon.